Hello and welcome back. I'm here today with a 2022 BMW i4 M50, the all-wheel drive, high-performance version of BMW's new all-electric 4 Series Grand Coupe. I'm fully charging up to 100%. Gonna hop out onto the highway and drive at a constant 70 miles an hour so we could do the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. But before we start, don't forget, please, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EV's YouTube channel. So while we're waiting for this guy to top off to 100%, let's talk a little bit about the i4. The i4 comes in two versions, the i4 eDrive 40, which is the rear wheel drive version. And with the 18 inch wheels, that has an EPA range rating of 301 miles. When you put on the 19 inch wheels, it drops down to 282 miles. Now I have the BMW i4 M50 here today, which is the all wheel drive high performance version. When that's fitted with the 19 inch wheels, it has an EPA range rating of 270 miles. But when it's fitted with the 20 inch wheels, which I have on this guy here today, they're big wheels, they're staggered. The fronts are 255, 35, 20s. The rears are 285, 30 R20s. Pirelli P0 tires, super sticky, made for high performance. The EPA range rating drops down to 227 miles. And that's the combined EPA range rating, not the highway EPA range rating. We weren't able to secure that. The EPA stopped publishing the split between city, highway, and combined for some reason on some of the vehicles. And we can only get their combined EPA range rating, which is the case with the I-4. The interesting thing is we just did the range test on the Rivian R1T, but all the range numbers were published, the highway also. But for some reason, we only have the combined, which is 227. That would mean that we would expect the highway range rating to be somewhere around 200. So that's probably about what I expect to do here today. But you know, we've been proven wrong before. We've overperformed and underperformed what we expected. So that's why we do these tests. We got to do them to know how far the car will go. And we're about 10 minutes away from getting started. So before we do get started, I want to talk about some of the things we do to set up the vehicle for the range tests. The first thing we always do is when the vehicle is cold, I set the tires to the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure. We did that this morning when it was cold before I left, tire pressure is all set. I will reset the trip meter right as I'm about to pull out of the parking lot and onto the highway. I set the climate control to 68 degrees and on fan setting number one, the lowest fan setting. Now there have been times where that wasn't enough to keep me cool or hot, so I'll bump it up a little bit. I always note that when I do in the range test, but today's a pretty moderate day. It's about 62 degrees right now. It's gonna get up to about 70, I think, uh, or some somewhere in the low 70s. So it's a good day for range. I checked my wind apps right now, very little wind, but that changes sometimes during the uh, range tests and I'll monitor that and I'll note it as I'm driving. And lastly, I'm gonna put the car in Eco Pro driving mode, which is the most efficient driving mode that the vehicle offers while still allowing for heating and cooling. Some cars have a super efficient driving mode that basically shuts off climate control. And uh, we don't think most people would be willing to drive their EVs that way. So we always set it on the most efficient setting that also allows for heating and cooling. So we're just about at 100%. We're gonna hop out onto the highway, get this range test started. All right, so we're out on the New Jersey Turnpike cruising along at 70 miles an hour. And one of the first things we do is check the speedometer to GPS to make sure that it's calibrated properly. And as with all BMWs, we've seen this time and time again, uh, the speedometer is always fast. It's always somewhere between two and three miles fast at 70 miles an hour. And that's exactly what I see today. I use two different GPS apps to read the speed of the vehicle. And when the speedometer says we're going 70 miles an hour, my apps are saying we're doing somewhere around 68. So when I bump it up the, to 72 miles an hour, the app is telling me I'm going 69 and a half miles an hour. So what I'm gonna do is run half the test with the 
cruise control set at 72 miles an hour and the other half at 73 miles an hour. But I'm not just gonna do half and half. About every 20 minutes, I'm gonna switch between 72 and 73 miles an hour. And I think that's gonna average out to a true 70 miles an hour. This is common. Many of the vehicles we test have a speedometer that's slightly off, but we know with BMWs, they're always off. They always read fast. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about is the battery. The i4, all versions of it, have an 83.9 kilowatt hour battery. But of that 81 point uh, five kilowatt hour is usable. BMW is opening up like 98% of the battery, I think that is 97 or 98% of the battery for use, which is, is unusual. They're, they're allowing customers to use a very high percentage of it. So I'd probably recommend people not charge to 100% for daily use, maybe to 80 or 85%, no more than that. And uh, charge to 100% whenever you'd like when you need to go on a long trip. But for most people, they don't really need over 200 miles of driving range every day. Uh, so of that uh, 81.5 kilowatt hour usable pack, we're hoping to use as much as we can here today. Unfortunately, the display here doesn't tell us the kilowatt hour used. So we won't have an exact number of that, but I am gonna drive this guy down to the point where the pedal response is, is very muted and uh, it won't go very fast, won't go over 30 miles an hour. So that's when we know the range test is done. So we'll squeeze out every kilowatt hour that we can to see how far this guy is gonna go. Early indications are pretty good. Uh, we're averaging 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour so far. We're not even at the first check-in point, which we do at the 75% state of charge, 50% state of charge, and then at 25% state of charge. And uh, we're averaging 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. That would get us up over 200 miles in this range test. Uh, we need to hit at least 2.4 to 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour in order to drive more than uh, 200 miles with an 81 kilowatt hour battery. and early indications show that we're gonna do that, which is really good. We might get close to the combined EPA range rating, which is always really good when we do that. Uh, the last thing I wanna note right now is I've checked my wind apps. Wind shouldn't be a problem, at least not yet. We're only getting winds between four and six miles an hour so far, and uh, it's coming kind of as a crosswind to as we're driving now south on the turnpike. I'll drive down to the end of the turnpike, turn around, drive north again, as I mentioned in these tests, we do these loop range tests. Uh, you don't want to do a range test where you start at one point and end at another point because that can't account for elevation change, for if there's a wind in your favor. So when we do the range test here at Inside EVs, we do these loop tests where I drive in long loops to help offset elevation change and any wind. I always try to end up where I started or very close to that. Okay, so we're going to continue driving now. I'm going to check in when we're at 75% state of charge. We'll see how far we've gone. All right, checking in at 75% state of charge. We are 25% into the range test and we've covered 56 miles. Not bad. We have a consumption rating of 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. For our European friends, I think it'll be a little bit more than 22 kilowatt hour per every uh, 100 kilometers. So uh, if I did the math correct there, uh, I'll double check when I write the article. But uh, pretty good. If we're able to continue down this path, we'll get very close to the combined EPA range rating, which doesn't happen too often when we do these range tests. Uh, usually we might get close to the uh, highway range uh, for the EPA range rating but as I said earlier that's not published we don't know what it is but I would imagine it would be somewhere right around 200 miles if the combined rating is 227 so with 56 miles covered a quarter of the way in that would put us at around 224 225 miles really close to the combined EPA range rating that's really good um, that'll be uh, I'll take that any day but we don't know, we're still early in, and uh, as we do these range tests, things change in the different segments. We'll check back in when we're halfway home, and we'll see where we're at. We're at 50% state of charge, and we have now covered 116 miles. So that second segment from 75% 
down to 50% state of charge. We outperformed the first segment. We covered 60 miles compared to 56. So we're at 116 miles driven. Our consumption rating has approved. We're up to 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So we're on track to beat the EPA range rating. That'll be great if we do that, that's surprising. And one of the things I wanna point out is how smooth and quiet the cabin is here in the i4. And this should have the harshest ride, the i4 M50. It has the lowest profile tires and everything. The suspension's all tuned to be in the sportiest version of this car. And I tell you, it eats up all the road irregularities, all the bumps very smoothly, much better than I would expect for the performance version of this car. Uh, I can't wait to drive the uh, real wheel drive version. I mean, especially now that we see how well this appears to be doing in the range test, I think we're gonna get about 230 miles better than the EPA range rating. The rear wheel drive version, as I mentioned earlier, with the 18 inch wheels is EPA range rated at 301 miles. So um, I'm gonna ask BMW if they can get a hold of one of those from me and do the range test on that because I think, uh, you know, if, if it's the same as what we're seeing here, that's a true 300 mile car cruising at highway speeds and that'd be fantastic. Well, I'll check back in when we're at 25% state of charge and see where we're at. All right, we're at 25% state of charge. We're three quarters of the way through. I got the shades on because it's a bright sunny day here. It's up to about uh, 73 degrees now. So great range weather, almost no wind. I keep checking the wind app. It's down to like one mile an hour now. So this is great range weather. And in that last segment from 50% down to 25%, we went 57 miles and we're at 173 miles driven on pace for around 230 miles better than the EPA range rating so see what happens in this last quarter but I'm pretty sure we're going to beat the combined EPA range rating which is really good not something that we do often I mean the Porsche Taycan is known for that the Porsche always crushes its EPA range rating but not too many other electric vehicles do. Looks like we're gonna do it here today with the uh, BMW i4 M50. Speaking of the M50, uh, this vehicle has a base MSRP of $65,900. The two-wheel drive version, the i4 eDrive 40, has a base price of $55,400. So it's a little more than $10,000 more for the all-wheel drive version, which is a much better performing vehicle, much higher performance you get. It goes zero to 60. BMW claims in 3.7 seconds, but it's been independently tested to do that in about 3.3 seconds. Now that's really close to what the Tesla Model 3 performance does. And there's been drag races out there. I've seen the videos. These cars are very evenly matched. The Model 3 performance typically beats it by a little bit when it does it in a drag race, but so it, it's so close that you wouldn't be able to tell from driving the vehicle. You'd have to be timed and on a track to notice such a slight difference. This is a great performing car and it has a great driving experience much better, honestly, than the Tesla Model 3. And I own a Tesla Model 3. I know how they drive. This is smooth, it handles the bumps and everything really well. Uh, I'm really impressed being that this isn't a bespoke chassis. Uh, BMW built this on this their CLAR platform, their modular platform that allows them to build gas, combustion vehicles, plug-in hybrid, as well as fully electric vehicles. So I've always been a, a proponent of bespoke chassis about purpose-built electric vehicles and and have been critical of automakers when they try to make a platform that suits all types of of uh powertrains because my my opinion's always been that it's it's never going to be optimized for that particular powertrain it's always going to suffer and have compromise and i tell you i can't feel the compromise in this car it's really put together well it handles great it's perfectly balanced near 50 50 weight distribution uh, it has that kick in the butt when you stomp on it this thing just throws you back in your seat uh, it, it, BMW did a great job with it I'm, I'm absolutely impressed I mentioned this when I did the first drive review back in September of last year over in Germany that I was really impressed with how well it drove and, and now getting behind the wheel of it again obviously I drove it a few days before I did this range test you don't get 
too much out of the range test. You're just sitting here at 70 miles an hour. Uh, but I've driven it the last few days spiritedly, and this thing's a great vehicle. Uh, Price-wise, it's, it's about $3,000 more than a Model 3 Performance, but BMW still qualifies for the federal tax credit. So if, if you qualify for it also, this uh, a comparably equipped uh, i4 M50 will actually end up costing you less than a Tesla Model 3 Performance. And quite honestly, it's a more complete car. The, the Model 3 uh, might have the edge in, in supercharging. I don't know, we're gonna do the DC fast charge test next, next on this. And the Model 3, of course, has the Tesla supercharger network, which is an enormous advantage. But driving, um, this, this vehicle drives great. Now, the range isn't good, as good as a Model 3. That might be where the compromise comes in because it has some extra weight since that this isn't uh, uh, a purpose-built chassis. It, it, it doesn't have the advantage of taking advantage of all the weight savings that you could when you're just building an electric vehicle. So maybe that's why we're only averaging 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour, um, whereas the Model 3 averages you know much better than that even at 70 miles an hour i did 310 miles in my tesla model 3 on the 70 mile an hour highway range test that's going to end up about 70 miles more than what we do here so that's a significant difference but if you can live with the range uh, this is actually a really good consideration if you're thinking about getting a tesla model 3 in my opinion um, driving wise performance wise uh, it's it, it's right up there with the Model 3, and actually, riding comfort and fit and finish, uh, it's better. So um, this is really the first electric vehicle, like sports sedan, that I would say is a true Tesla Model 3 competitor. This can go head to head with a Model 3, in my opinion, and uh, that's that's good for BMW. All right, we're going to check back in when we're done at the Electrify America DC fast charging station, and we'll talk about the final results. All right, well, we made it to the Electrify America DC fast charge station, and we had a great final quarter. We drove 66 miles in that last leg and finished up with 239 miles driven, blowing by the 227 mile EPA range rating for the i4 M50. Now I really want to drive the rear wheel drive i4, which has an EPA range rating of 301 miles to see if we can past that. We're going to put in a request with BMW as soon as I'm done editing this video to see if they'll loan us one of those so we can do our range test. Well, that's a wrap on today's range test video. I hope you like what we're doing here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. Please, if you do, click that subscribe button and follow us on social media so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle. First drive, first impressions, range tests, charging, all that good stuff we do here at Inside EVs and thanks for watching.